We are back against Bahamut for an even more reliable zero turns strategy. Really, this one is just about getting your setup right, and then you can just Terra Spam and you're good to go. But the turn order has to be just like this. You need Freya, then you need Selfie, then you need Terra. Otherwise, it doesn't quite work. So the game plan is, get that Leo call on Freya. It's a perfect fit. She's gonna be up in the air, she's never gonna take a turn again. So we'll get that extra Leo damage off for the rest of the fight, now that it's applied. So she's in the air, and we have to get that summon up. So, strap in for some riveting selfie gameplay in just a second here, where she just dances around while Freya drops spears to build the summon up. Then we go in. It's as simple as that. In retrospect, Possibly Kurasame would have been a better idea than Raijin. I believe it is more damage, but is what it is. We were kind of capping anyway, so it didn't really matter much. In case Bahamut does get a turn off, we'd at least be safe. But he wasn't going to get a turn anyway. Special shout out and special thanks to Theologica for your Cisne. Your 5 out of 5 Ultima weapon, Cisne, proved to be very, very effective. So thank you. I also opted for the Ifrit summon, which I normally don't do when selfies around. Normally I always go with Pandemonium, but I figure with all the excess damage between the Freya Spears and the Cisne follow-ups, we could use a little bit more attack output. Plus applying that Hellfire debuff, I believe it's called, excuse me, Hellfire buff whenever you go to the Ifrit summon on Cisne, it's perfect. Ups the HP damage even more if need be. Probably wasn't necessary, but there's no kill like overkill. I still have not started my Bahamut farming at all, but I did learn that Yuna's Sending can kill Bahamut in one hit, so I'm going to be set. I think it would be wise to unequip any sort of speed passives or start passives on your other two characters and just auto plus your way through it and Yuna can just bring it back. Prish can do the same thing, just pop that LD, he's, he's dead. I didn't get Prish though, but I'm not going to need her. It's still going to be one hit kill farming from here on out. I just haven't started it yet. but. I got plenty of work cut out for me, I guess. Now that it's been a few days, I've been able to see other people's clears and see how they're taking this out. Quistus seems to be a very popular character for this stage, which makes sense when you have delay and delete immunity. Quistus can just bypass that, so Bahamut can never get a turn. So consider Quistus if you haven't done this yet. Machina is another very popular for this, for, for very good reason, because his single target damage is still just unmatched. It's okay, well maybe Prish now, but Machina really is a sight to behold. He's out. He's the only crystal level 80 character that I've been seeing over the past few months that even holds a candle to all these C90s. He's even he's out damaging most of them still. He doesn't need C90. He doesn't need an ultimate weapon. Machina just shreds no matter what. He's a very very good character. I'm also seeing a lot of people pairing him with Snow to get what I'm hearing called Snow Overflow going with that Snow BT effect. Very good pairing with Machina. Very good. Okay, so now that we have Selfie's debuff applied, it's all about keeping this turn order right. So Terra, you just drop an HP attack since you're going to get another turn in this summon anyways. And then Selfie, you are going to get out of here and Cisne is going to pop in here. So that way, yeah, we can be sure that Terra carries us out of the summon turn free. So we might as well just pop two of these just to drop the spears and stall a little bit out of this summon. There we go. Perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. So now the fight is already won. There is nothing to worry about now, really. Just make sure you're, you do your... Ah, can't talk. Just make sure you do your Terra rotations properly. Don't bother pressing Meteor. Melt down all the way. It's going to be more damage, especially with this, Leo, with this Leo call ability up. The fight is already won at this point. Now it's just a matter of time. Now we just slog through 86%. And we should be good to go. In fact... I, I think most people could get this done faster than I could. I only have a 0 out of 5 ultimate weapon, as I detailed last time with Noctis, but I forgot to even give it to Terra. So Terra is doing this without an ultimate weapon at all. So I know most people invested in the short sword. Just give that to Terra and this will be done even faster. Zack is another very popular character for this fight, which is no surprise. He seems to be a popular character for every fight because he's just that good. Zack is insanely strong and you kind of can't die with him around. Okay, well, you can in some situations, but you are ridiculously safe with Zack around and he does a shit ton of damage. So consider Zack too, if you haven't done this. He's another great option. 
but realistically, no boss turn strats for this fight are just the way to go. Bahamut's orb only counts down when he gets a turn, and the fact that it can only go up to three means they're just begging you to no boss turn this thing. So why waste any time? Just spam your way through it. You do need a lot of damage though because Bahamut has six, I just said Bahamut, Jesus. Bahamut has 60 million HP. That's a lot, so bring heavy hitters, seriously. It is strange though, you would think that they would gear up Bahamut a little bit more for battle. It's Bahamut. You did, I didn't think he'd be such a pushover, especially compared to other summon fights like say, I don't know, Shiva, which is by far the worst one for the Divine Summons. Nothing else even comes close to that Shiva fight. It is cancerous, but this is a walk in the park. In general, it's a walk in the park, especially compared to some Divine Summon fight like Shiva. That one, that one is still, still pretty brutal. But I have to say, I do envy people who haven't done that fight yet, and they happen to have Zack BT. That would have been such an ace in the hole if we had that when Shiva came out, because he really, really, really trivializes that fight. He really does. I mean, you know, you still gotta be somewhat careful, but as far as all of Shiva's BS mechanics, Zack just eats all of them. It's really just easy street with him around. It does seem like these divine summons are flying by. It really does. Like I was losing track of time of how how many of these we've gotten already. If I'm not mistaken, the only divine summon we haven't seen yet is Odin. Well, and Chocobo and Sylph don't even they're, they're not summons. They're just don't don't talk about Chocobo and Sylph. They don't count. Okay? That's <laughs> that that's not they're not even part of the discussion when we talk about this. So don't don't even, don't well actually me about that. We're not going to get divine a divine Chocobo fight. Watch that. Watch Square does it and proves me wrong one of these days. But those two have been neglected for so many years that I don't think that there's going to be any sort of uh, revamping of Chocobo and Sylph. They never give us materials to upgrade them anyway. Most of us never even use those summons unless we're trying some weird strategy where you need to get the summon up like immediately because those summons build faster. But other than that, like nobody uses them, and nor should they. Don't forget the Mog Summit. Shut up. Just, just stop. Enough. I'm a little torn on what to do with upcoming banners. And by upcoming banners, I mean one in particular. I mean Sice. I want Sice. She just seems like a badass. She just seems like she'd be cool to have. I don't know how much I'd use her, but I just think her whole aesthetic and everything, she just looks so fucking cool. Like, I, I want her around, but I don't know. Yuna kind of... Yuna kind of, you know, ran me dry here, so I, we'll see about that. And I realized, okay, last time I said that I spent 400k for Yuna, I've misspoke. 400g tokens, I didn't spend 400k on one banner, I've never even had 400k. No, I did not spend 400k gems for Yuna. No one even corrected me on that, well, somebody did, but... And she was right, she's like, wait, what do you mean you spent 400k? I'm like, oh, shit, that's not what I meant, thank you, my bad. I'm so happy that I'm still using Freya. I'm so happy that she's this good. Like, I knew she'd be good, but she's way better than I thought she was. Don't you love that? When a favorite character comes out or gets upgraded or whatever, and you pull simply because they're a favorite, and then upon playing them, they end up actually being better in-game than you thought they would be. That's always such a blessing. And I feel like I got that with Freya, so I'm very happy. I mean, look at this, I love her. Okay, we got, obviously, the Cisne damage. And then, okay, we don't quite have Max Brave. Oh, boom, thank you, Freya. We're completely capped. You're the best. I love you. This setup really is oppressive and cheesy, though. Like, holy shit. Like, this is not fair at all to do to a boss, but who cares? They don't play, they don't play fair sometimes either, so why should we? I feel like it's been way too long since I've used any kind of Mega Man X music. So here we go. Although this is the Marvel vs. Capcom 3 version of Zero's theme. I figure Zero turns, Zero's theme seemed appropriate. It's not the first time I've even done that. I've used this song a lot for Zero turn runs, so I'm not exactly one for new ideas. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Just like this setup, or setups like this. Terra spamming with a bunch of help. Oppressive setup. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Man, okay, I gotta say, I remember when she came out with Laguna, and the overall consensus was, no, you should get Laguna. She's a much better investment than Terra. 
Maybe that will become true down the line in the FR era. In fact, maybe, I'm, I'm sure it will, but as of right now, I do not feel that at all. I've used Terra so much more than I've used Laguna. But then again, you know, it's... When you're trying to get zero turns and stuff, Terra tends to be better for it. Especially if you don't want to run Noxus all the time. Terra's way better for the zero turn stuff than Laguna is, absolutely. They're both great characters, though. I feel like Terra kind of got undersold. Underhyped, even. Like, I don't know. I know I've talked about this before. But it was, I don't know, people were talking about her damage. Like, she doesn't do that much damage. But, yes, she does. It's just It just takes a little longer to do. Because, okay, I don't look at it as just damage per action. I look at it... I look at it as damage per turn on the count. We are doing all this damage without adding a single turn on the count. Like, okay, I get it. You don't have to get zero all the time. Like, zero is just something that people like to do for fun here and there. But then people will say things like, turn count doesn't matter. Well, yes, it does. Like, it absolutely does. In every single stage that we have ever gotten, we have certain stage requirements. You know, usually it's don't get killed. <laughs> yeah, usually it's it's don't get killed, don't lose X amount of HP, and do it in this amount of turns. So I'm sorry, you cannot say that turn count just doesn't matter when there's literally a turn requirement for every single stage that we get. So yes, turn count does matter, meaning that turn efficient characters matter in the grand scheme of things. They just do. That's not even an opinion, that's just a fact. That's just the way the game is structured. Turn count doesn't matter, even though, even though they ask for a certain turn count for every single stage we get. Like, what? What? Do you hear yourself? These Cisne follow-ups, though. Thank you again, Theologica. Holy shit. The amount of damage she is pumping out. <laughs> God. God, she's good. I don't get why you're wearing swimwear on the battlefield, though. Between you and Zack and the swim trunks, like, you, you're really gonna... You're really gonna put on clothes to go to the fucking beach while you're fighting the King of Dragons? I mean, whatever works, like, I can't criticize you. I mean, you're doing great regardless of what you're wearing, but it's just... It's just a weird thing to wear, given what we're doing here. I, I don't know. But speaking of Zack swim trunks, you know what I find really weird are... <laughs> The people who bought the Zack Swim Trunks and bought the uh, the snowboard skin for the Greatsword. So Zack's just running around with Swim Trunks and a snowboard. Like, he looks like he doesn't know what the fuck he's doing. He doesn't know what the hell climate he's preparing for. Like, okay. <laughs> swim Trunks and a snowboard. That's our Zachary now. Why? But okay, consider what we're doing here. He's about to die. He's at 1%, I believe. Yes. And we still have a Terra LD left. This is gonna kill him. We don't even need to go through this full rotation. And I didn't even bring the Alton weapon. That is not to brag, that is to illustrate how painless this setup is for this stage. You don't even need all the fixins to get it done. Just set up, rotate properly, and do your thing. And you will be A-OK. -okay. But that's that. Another zero. I don't think I'll come back here, but I hope you guys enjoyed, and thank you for watching.